For this Sunday's case study, I have a 31-year-old female who presents to the emergency department with a few hours of tingling on her right side of her face and some facial droop. She also has some tingling on her right arm and her right leg. She has no known medical problems, but does endure some neck pain that she frequents a chiropractor for. She did have a high velocity neck manipulation earlier in the day. She also endorses many joint problems and seems to be hypermobile or really flexible. So, what do you think is going on in this patient and what workup should we do in the emergency department? So let's go through the answers of the case study that I presented yesterday. We had a 31 year old female who presented to the emergency department with complaints of right facial numbness and tingling, as well as the arm and leg and right facial droop. So her past medical history really was not that significant. She did have neck manipulations that had been done, including one that was done earlier that day, as well as a history of hypermobility, or in other words, she just thought that she was really flexible. Now she presents to the emergency department with all these complaints that localize to the right side of her face, as well as neck pain, and that is concerning for a stroke. Even though she's not older or has other risk factors for strokes, such as smoking or diabetes, this is consistent with the pattern of a stroke, so it should be taken very seriously. A lot of you guys picked up on some of the hints that I was given of the hypermobility, and this patient did have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Now, what that is, it's also abbreviated as EDS, but it can be a potential cause of stroke in young patients. So EDS is caused by a mutation in our collagen, which basically is the connective tissue that is formed within our body's tissue that can make joints more hypermobile, but can also make blood vessels more susceptible to injury. So when this patient presents to the emergency department, this should be a stroke alert, which would consist of imaging that should be done, including a CAT scan of the brain, as well as a CT angiogram of the head and neck to evaluate the blood vessels. Other studies may include an MRI of the brain to evaluate for potential stroke as well. So the diagnosis in this patient is a vertebral artery dissection and many of you guys got the answer to that. So how could this potentially happen? This is an artist's rendition of the cervical spine or the bones in the neck here and then this red tube is our vertebral artery and it travels along the side of our neck on either side through small little holes in the bone. Now these arteries branch off from arteries that come from the heart and then go up our neck to supply the circulation to the brain. So any injury to these vessels can cause small clots that can form and then flick off to the brain and cause a stroke. There are many risk factors to developing a vertebral artery dissection and connective tissue disorder can make someone more susceptible to having a dissection. There is many things that can precipitate a dissection of one of these arteries, and that includes chiropractic manipulation, sports, yoga, even coughing, and patients with connective tissue disorders diagnosed or not diagnosed are susceptible to these. In this particular patient, she had no idea that she had EDS. So typical treatment for a vertebral artery dissection or any artery dissection for that matter is typically blood thinner so you don't form a clot on that torn vessel and potentially have a stroke. So I hope you guys learned something this week and stay tuned next week for another case. So I did post a video yesterday on how these types of injuries can happen, but essentially the gist of this story is this was a 28 year old female who lives in the, my home state in Georgia and went to a chiropractor for some neck pain. Uh, she had a manual adjustment and began to feel ill during the time of her manipulation. She was sent to a hospital from the chiropractic office via EMS and was found to have four dissected vessels in her neck uh, and suffered cardiac arrest and subsequently a stroke. Now, of course, all the details surrounding this incident are not clear and are purely limited to the news articles that are available. According to the patient's GoFundMe page, she has been in the hospital for over a month and is completely paralyzed. So my thoughts and prayers go out to her as she recovers from this injury.